Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this video I'm going to do an unboxing and review of the Loop de Loom. I keep seeing this in stores and um, it's kind of replaced where the Rainbow Loom is in my stores. Um, this one is usually front and center and then the Rainbow Loom is behind it. So um, I thought I'd check it out and see what it's all about. But this is the Loop de Loom. This is where you should be able to make um, woven items using their loom. Different styles here that they've done. So, looks like on, according to this, the one loom length, you can make seven inch wide things, but it looks like you're supposed to be able to connect them together to buy more. Um, I will say that this kit, um, although I got it on sale so I didn't pay that much for it, um, they sell for a little over $30 um, at Michael's where I bought it from. So they are a little bit, bit expensive, so um, definitely this video might help you kind of decide what you want to do if you'd like to buy it or if it's something you'd be interested in doing. So, it says one loom and 120 yards of yarn. So we'll take a look at it. So, loop de loom. Different things to make. Uh, they talk about what the. Trying to explain what things are. So, the. Saying that going back and forth is called a weft. And then the th strings that run up and down are called the warps. That might get a little confusing, but um, and then here's where it shows that they can be connected together to make something longer. So I mean, I think you definitely have to really enjoy this if you're going to spend another thirty dollars for another loom, because um, there is the possibility that I'm s I assume you'd be able to stitch these together too. So I'm uh, just doing stuff on one loom. So now it looks like they have a setting up the loom, but we'll take a look here what's in here. Three little. Here's the loom itself. Little handle. You can see the little things turning. These are our little. Probably won't be the right name for them. I'll come in. I want to call them the knitting rods, but they're not. Let's see if there was a specific. They're called a peg. They're pegs. So they're they're pretty sturdy, which is good. I don't know if we'll need all of them. Then these are supposed to just fit in here, but you're supposed to alternate them. So if I have one with the little hook thing pointing towards me, the next one goes the other way. So we'll do that down the loom here. Alright, so I'm a little tough to get in, but I suppose that's good so it doesn't fall apart on you. Three. All right. So that wasn't too difficult at all to do that. Now 
we have our loop de loom yarn here. It's actually kind of pretty, in my opinion, but. Find the end. Generally, though, when I have a ball of yarn, they always have this really tempting end that you want to, that they like, oh, you should pull on this one because that would, um, it's right there on the outside. But whenever I do yarn, it actually makes more sense to find the inside string. Sometimes it's easier than others. There we go. Because as you pull this out now, your ball doesn't have to twist and turn as you go around. So if you do it this way, then it's got to flip all over as it unravels. But now, this way, it'll just come right out the center. A little tip for you. Alright, so we've got the, pe the pegs on. And now we need to measure and cut how long we want to make our thing and then add an extra 12 inches. So, give me one moment and I will do that. Let's make a little, or maybe make a scarf. We'll, 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 go, all, we'll go all out, so. But we'll start with the scarf. I will cut what I need for the length of that and then um, I will be right back with you. All right, so I cut 15 strands of 24 inch I decided that a scarf might be a little bit too ambitious at this time, so I'm going to go for a little bag. So I cut it 24 inches, so it'll be, hopefully, a little 6 inch bag with the extra that they wanted for the 12 inches. And it says to take the center of each of these, so if we'll just fold these all in half. Take the center of each one and put it in the little pegs. So I'll do that real quick. And I don't know how far I'm supposed to. It's pretty tight there. Definitely want to get your center right the first time. So I'll get these put on and then I will show you, or I'll fast forward so you can see, but. All right, so I think I got them all on here now. Just have them all pointed towards the back, which they are. Check what's next. So now we start doing some weaving. Again, we have our string that they call the weft, which is like our part that we go in between here. So we take it, a little extra on one end, And we put it in the center here, between all of the guides, and pull it down. It doesn't look like they necessarily pull it all the way down either. Just kind of get it down there. Make sure that stays behind. And it says to turn the dial. And we take our string, or yarn rather, do the same thing. Let's make 
sure it's all even. Pull it down in there. Where my little tails are twisty or something. So, so far, not totally sure here what we're going to have when we're done, if I'm doing it this the right way. We shall see. So we turn it again. And we bring our thread up again. Between all of them. Turn again. I was worried it would be hard to get between these little guide things, but it's actually not so bad. Turn. I think remembering to turn will probably be the hardest thing. Because once you get the pattern down, or get the muscle memory down for how to do this left to right, and I think you'll be pretty set. Get that side. So I'll just lay this that comes around. Then down. So I'm going to do a few more rows of this. I'm also going to try and pull my tails tight here and see if that's, if I just have them crooked or that's just the way it kind of looks when it starts out. So it looks like I have them all kind of crossed. a little better. That looks better. But I'll keep doing a few more rows here to see what I can come up with, what it looks like, and I will probably fast forward so you can watch, but um, no more talky right now. Alright, so I kind of filled it up here. I have my string off the side, I have my thing over so I know I'm ready to go for a next row. So I'm going to push these down, all the little strings inside. Like that. So that's kind of neat. See what else they have to say about this. So you just keep doing that until you basically fill up fill up everything. Or fill it up a good ways. Like here they have it almost to the top. So then they say that once you get it all the way up there, you can move your work down. So how they say to do that, so you have your long string behind here, looks like. Oh, mine are kind of, let's start on the other end where we don't have the little tail from our starting point right here. 
So I say that we have these tails that hang off the back. So we can pick up our peg, it says. Lift it up until the peg is out. And then put the peg back in the hole. And then pull down your little cord thing. We can do that all the way along the loom. I suppose we want to make sure we don't cross how they were before. Or like, if this one is pointed towards me, then I want to make sure it's pointed towards me when I'm done. I have those couple pegs that stuck. couple more to go here. So this part definitely wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be kind of scary, but I mean it is, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And I read it and I'm like, oh uh, yeah, what am I supposed to do there? So, here's what I have so far. That's my little tail end, I think. So it looks like that so far. Kind of cool. Definitely this, not that string. Uh-oh. There's another string. Oh, it already fell down. That first string that we put on I don't know if I missed something in the book or um, if I just wasn't being careful enough, but the very first one that we went through, um, it definitely wants to go down into the bottom and just kind of keep unraveling, so that would definitely be something Mona's secure to the peg or to the first strand once you have it wrapped around, so otherwise it would just keep unraveling or it'd be kind of messy right there. But, I think overall this is a pretty cute little thing to do. Um, it's a little bit... I suppose there are other ways to do it, but... Um, this seems fairly easy. A little time consuming, but of course stuff like this with the craft products usually are. I think it works pretty well. I can see making a little purse out of this and... Um, securing it I don't think would be too hard. You have to do some some knotting and some finishing work to get it to close right and then do some depending on what you were going to make you'd have to do some stitching up the sides or um, things like that to get it to close but so that is my unboxing of the loop de loom i think it's kind of cute actually i'm um, pleasantly surprised that it worked pretty well Definitely needs a little bit of practice. Um, I would probably choose some other colors of yarn or maybe thicknesses of. If you get some thicker yarn, it wouldn't take quite as many passes. Um, I think I read... where did I read that? I read somewhere in here that you can just start out initially with taking your yarn and like doubling it or even quadrupling it so you would work... you'd have that much more going on from the left to the right than you would if you um, just do the single, so you would get there much faster. But I think that it's pretty cool. So like I said, this one costs $30. Um, if you get it from like Michael's, which is where I got this one though, um, when they're not on sale of course, which they keep seem to having it on, a, on an eternal sale, except for I was m managed to snag one a while ago that when they weren't on sale for half the price because um, I had a coupon so look for those 
Um, so if you're going to, you know, I think it'd be a cute little gift, especially for um, someone younger who's wanting to learn how to do things. Um, you know, this is just my own opinion, though. I'm going to hang on to this one, and we'll see what we can do with it. But it's it's kind of neat. Like I said, I think the pegs are sturdy. I thought they'd be flimsy. They seem to stay in the base pretty well. We will test that here. Oops, lost two. So, not too bad. But, considering, that's pretty good. Might be something you'll have to adapt as you get, as you play with it more. Maybe some glue or something to keep the pegs in, but most people aren't going to turn their loom upside down like I just did, so I think that it's, I think that's cute. I think you can make some cute little things, and of course, once you've gotten, once I got the technique down, you could probably add in quite a few little, little bobbles or, um, different things. You could of course only make it like three strands wide and you could have a totally cute bracelet. Um, three or four or five or just two. You can just have a really cute little bracelet. So I mean I think this is pretty versatile and I think that I mean 30 bucks for a gift if it's you know you have a budget and you know maybe but um, if you can get it on sale for you know half the price or something definitely it's something cute. Um, great for anybody who loves to craft especially kids. Because it's fairly, um, fairly self-explanatory, although I'll say that when I was first reading this, when I opened it with you guys, I was kind of like, um, there were a few terms or words in here that I'm kind of like, why didn't they just say this or this, this way or that way? And plus it does appear to come in um, English and French, I believe the language is. So that kind of is a little bit confusing because it's English on one side, French on the other, and... Um, it's not totally laid out how I would do it if I was going to um, separate things out for different languages. I would have done a double book with English on one side and the other language on the other side, or vice versa. But, so that is the loop, loop de loom. I think that it's pretty cool. Um, if you thought this was interesting, it's something you might want to do. Like I said, you can find them at Michael's. They are also, um, they also have their own website, I'm sure you could search for it, the Loop de Loom, and you'd be able to find um, more other places that it's sold and things like that. Um, like I said, this is not, um, nobody paid me to do this or anything like that, I just picked one up because I thought it was cute and I kept seeing it kind of over, every time I walked into Michael's it was right there in the front door and it was always like, oh, what is that, what is that, and um, it's kind of seems to be something they're pushing for Christmas sales this year. And I just thought I'd check it out because I um, I wasn't sure if it was kind of um, something that would be a waste of money, I guess. So um, I figured that since I like to try new crafty things and um, I was able to get it for a good deal, then um, I'd kind of let you guys know what I thought about it. And um, then you can kind of decide if it's something that you would like to do so that you wouldn't, you know, waste your money on something that you thought was kind of dumb or something like that, so. Which isn't fun, because I've done that plenty of times, where I've bought things where I thought it would be super cool, and then be like, oh, um, this stinks, and then it's hard to return, um, hard to return certain things if you've already opened them or started cutting things, and so, yeah. But, loop de loom pretty cool. Um, hopefully I kind of showed you how to put it together and how to use it, and... Maybe it's something that you'd like to try. But thanks for watching. I hope that you um, kind of like this and gives you a little heads up because I think that's important to share your opinions on crafty things because that's how we know what things are good and what things to stay away from. So thanks for watching and I will have other things for you soon.